Well, it was a very busy last couple of days here at the site of the Dolly collision with the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And uh, they're still dropping the balls into the water there. See, there's the wrecking ball going in. And I'll show it to you again here in slow motion. Here it looks pretty cool. It just drops into the water and it goes down under the water and it breaks up the roadway so they can now grapple it all up with the dredge cranes. And you can see they come up with pretty good sized chunks. And then today was a milestone moment as they finally cleared that last piece that had been tied up. It took them two and a half days and it was wrapped all the way around the towers of the pier. And I was very surprised that this was the very first nighttime move that I've seen them do with any of these large pieces. This is that 560 ton piece that everybody was talking about today. And it looks like they didn't get it moving until about 10 minutes till 1 a.m. early this morning. And they finally started moving it. We think at some point they might have had a little bit of issue. I'm not sure. It looked pretty stable to me as they moved it out of the area of the bridge collapse and started to head over to Sparrows Point with the payload there. You can see they'll just come to a stop for we don't know what reason. And it stayed like that all night until about almost 11 o'clock in the morning. And here it is at 10 a.m. It's still not moving. We were wondering what's going on. Why isn't it moving yet? But I think it's about to. And then by 10.15, they were off to the races again. And look how it's just dangling off on the right-hand side there, just a few feet above the water. They had that load pretty stable. Look, you don't see any bouncing or swaying. And you can see it's a lopsided load. You have two lines on one side and one line on the other side of the truss hanging it. And it just meandered its way there over towards Sparrows Point. And after about the 45 minute ride over there, it finally reached its destination at Sparrows Point. And just look at this dramatic transformation over the last few days. Remember, this is what it looked like a few days ago with the fallen bridge truss wrapped all the way around the bridge pier. And then this is what it looked like this morning, just as they were getting ready to move it out of the area. And then completing the transformation here as the Chesapeake 1000 crane hauls off that bridge truss to Sparrows Point. And there's a great aerial shot here of the Thomas Rankin. And if you look on the deck, you can see the red and green buoys as they're getting ready to lower the red one into the water, that first one right there. So right here, you can see they are lowering it into the water right now. There, I've sped it up a little bit for you so you can see what's happening there. And then as it got set down, you can see the cutter separates from it. But they're very quickly now getting things ready. They are marking this new channel and they expect to have it ready this week. And here's a photo from aboard the deck of the Coast Guard Carter James Rankin as they were dropping some of these buoys into the water. And then here is a great, beautiful bird's eye view of the Chessie 1000 schlep in this massive 560 ton section of the Francis Scott Key Bridge Truss over to Sparrows Point. And then right behind it, right now in the picture, you can see now the wide open channel between the dolly and the piers on the right. And that you can see is where that little open space in there is where the limited access channel is going to be placed. And we'll show you that in a moment. But I just wanted to show you um, how this looked and just look how precariously, dangerously low this thing is hanging. And they got extra cables there tying it together, holding this thing nice and stable. It's, you can't even see any swinging at all on the load. It's just pretty amazing. I'm glad they gave us that perfect video because I made this screenshot here and then I overlaid for you here my infographic of where the channels are going to be. And remember, the federal channel sort of cuts right through part of the dolly, the MV dolly right over here. And remember where the channel originally was. It was between the two piers. So you have this pier on the right and the other one is crushed and destroyed. It's right here on the other side of the bow of the dally. So the federal channel was in the middle and this is that limited access channel that they're gonna open up this week, 300 feet wide. And how apropos that we had it, the picture here, 
showing the Chessy 1000 carrying that 560 ton bridge truss of it right here because this piece was pulled out from right here. This was the last piece that was still blocking the channel. So now we have that completely cleared up channel here and everything will be ready to go this week. That's what they're telling us. Now I'm still concerned that they haven't mentioned that they've recovered the other two construction guys yet, which I know they've gotta be in this area someplace. Governor Wes Moore showed us this cool picture this morning that I haven't seen anywhere else. So take a look at this. So this is a picture from a poll that we had just yesterday. This piece right here, this represents 560 tons of steel. That 560 tons is about the weight of a jumbo 747. That's what was pulled out from the water yesterday. That's important to remember that just the process of rigging it, just the process of a preparation was about a two and a half day operation, moving smoothly, moving methodically, and the remarkable work of Unified Command was able to help make this pull happen. You'll also notice a few things that I want to show. First of all, the size of how big this piece is, if you just look at the people next to it, you get a better sense of scale, of the enormity of this piece of steel, the enormity of this, this chunk, this tranche of the key bridge. The other thing I want to notice, is, I want people to remember is this. This is happening at night. This operation happened when many people were already fast asleep. I think Colonel Pinchase and I think we were, we were talking, you sent me this, I think it was like 1130 at night. So as soon as Chessy moved that bridge truss over to Sparrow's Point, the U.S. Coast Guard wasted no time. They immediately brought in their cutter, the James Rankin, and they started to lay these red and green buoys to mark that new limited access channel which, by the way, they updated it. It used to be, I think, 280 feet wide, and now they're saying it's going to be 300 feet wide. Now, this infographic that I made for you shows you the alternate channel there with the truss still laying across it from last week. But as of today, April 23rd, there is no more truss there. That is now a completely clear channel. And once they got it over to Sparrow Point, it took them a long time to set this puppy down. To release that load, they had to go slowly, oh so slowly. Believe it or not, that overall process took about 30 minutes just to set it down. And guess what? The Chesapeake 1000 is not the only crane moving parts of bridges as well. You have other cranes coming in here and they're going, hey, put me in, coach, put me in. It's just like when you move somebody, right? Everybody has their own little task and some people move pillows and some people move giant dressers. Well, look, the smaller cranes can move the smaller pieces of the bridge trusses. Oh, and just a reminder, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to watch this other video that I did on the FIU bridge collapse. You will love that one. One of my best ones yet. And then check out this other video here also on how to install laminate flooring in your house because I do all sorts of engineering projects here for you. So thanks for joining us today and we'll see all of you on the next one.